everyone. This is Heather Wibbles, the Cocktail Contessa. I'm here today with another virtual summer sip series session. Today with me, I have Felicia Corbett of Trouble Bar. She is the Assistant Director of Beverage Operations. Um, she is also a whiskey guardian for Angels Envy. So she is a cocktail garnish goddess, in addition, addition to just being, in general, a cocktail goddess. So what we're going to talk about today is how to elevate your cocktail with your garnish scheme. Um, we're going to talk about the way that you consume your cocktail. When someone brings you a cocktail and hands it to you and puts it down in front of you, the first thing you do is you look at it and you see it and you drink with your eyes. So you're going to consume that cocktail first with the visual impression that you have from it. So when you build a cocktail and think about the garnish, you want to think about how to elevate the cocktail, not just with the flavors and the tastes that are already in the cocktail, but how to match visually the appearance of what you're trying to give to the consumer, whether it's yourself or your friends, of what experience you want them to have in the cocktail. Now, garnishing at home is very different from garnishing in an establishment. So I'm going to let Felicia talk with us a little bit about the considerations that you need to make when you're actually working with garnishes in a restaurant or a bar or an establishment where you have a high volume of people, you have lots of people coming in, but you still want to impress them with the garnishes and make sure the garnishes match how to best, um, how to best serve your customers, how to give them the best cocktail experience. So uh, when putting together uh, a menu for whether it be a bar or a restaurant, the first thing you want to do is figure out what flavor profiles you want to go with. And then you can have so much freedom in the cocktails and the garnish. So you can decide if you want it contrast flavors or if you'd rather them be similar. But then you also have to have the visual aspect of it because like you said, you see with your eyes first and then your nose second. So I personally like to do contrast things because it makes a more interesting experience for you but you also have to think about volume and what's in season so uh, for instance now is the time for like beautiful herbs in the garden but in a few months it won't be anymore so you have to be willing to change with um, the season and come up with some really creative garnishes that way so um, one of the things to think about when you're garnishing at home is what you do have in your garden. Just like Felicia said, it's important to use what you have, what you have in your pantry. For me, I keep a lot of things on hand like cinnamon sticks, star anise, um, any kind of basic herb you can use. Any kind of herb that you use for a rub or for grilling, you can actually use as a rim on your cocktail. For an old fashioned, something really savory and a little bit spicy makes an excellent rim on a highball or an old fashioned. So think about using that. Um, another thing when you're garnishing at home, is just use what you have. If you don't have anything super fancy, if you're making it for yourself at home and you really want a skewer full of gumdrops or, you know, gummy vitamins on there, put it in there. It's your cocktail. You can do what you want. The idea is to have fun, make it visually interesting. You do want to do what Felicia says, which is, which is match, either contrasting flavors or comparable kind of similar flavors to elevate the cocktail and make the experience more well-rounded. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about it. But what we're going to do today is we're going to walk you through several different classes of cocktails from champagne cocktails, Manhattans, highballs, sours, juleps, and old fashioned. And we're going to have several um, garnish suggestions for you on each of those. So in just a second, we'll start showing you how to do all of those things uh, at home or if you work at a bar, how to do them at a bar. So hang in for just a second and we'll set up and get that started. decorations today we're going to start with demonstrations for an old-fashioned now the old-fashioned is a very basic cocktail for bourbon we all know it has bourbon and sugar and bitters it's not very complicated but you can do a lot with a really fun garnish in this case we're just going to use a citrus garnish a lot of old fashions can really benefit from the addition of orange peel and orange essences in them they bring a lot of the extra flavors and the vanilla and the sweet fruity notes out of your actual cocktail especially when you're using just plain Angostura bitters it's a nice addition so in this case, we're going to be using three different ideas or three different garnishes that you can do at home. One is a simple orange crisp. It's a dehydrated orange crisp that we're going to add to the glass. One is an orange rose that we go a little extra and set on fire. And we're going to do a little bit more play with the torch by brulee the top of an orange slice and then topping that the cocktail with the orange slice as well. So let me show you how to do those three things. 
So let's talk old fashions. Now to do this part of the demonstrations, I'm going to show you how to do three different old fashioned garnishes. First thing we're going to do is get a glass with some bourbon in it. Um, and we're going to take a dehydrated orange slice. This is a blood orange slice. You can also use a regular um, slice. Now when you add this to a cocktail, you don't necessarily add a lot of scent or flavor, but it is something that's visually striking and it's something you can just take a clip and easily attach to the rim of the glass. It looks a little bit more elevated and a little bit fancy when you do something like this. Now, if you do want to go ahead and add some orange essence to the actual cocktail, you can just take an orange slice and either express that over the cocktail itself or go ahead and put it in the cocktail as well. So you have a couple different options of ways you can get that orange flavor in there. The second thing we'll do is take another glass of bourbon and we're going to actually take one of these slices and we're going to put some sugar on it and brulee it with a kitchen torch. So I will get a little bit of uh, demerara sugar, sprinkle that on top. And you do want to spread it around so it's pretty even on the top there. Now um, go ahead and get your torch out um, and set that thing on fire. You can use a pretty low setting to do this. Um, so go ahead and put that on fire and as I do this I can smell a lot of the smell of the the caramel notes from the sugar being burnt. I get a little bit more of the orange zest coming out. And as I do it, I'm also making sure I go around the rim a little bit. As you go around the rim with the torch, you'll darken that outside edge of it and it looks a little bit more striking. So that's something that you can do when you um, want to put together this um, orange slice. So you can either let it cool completely or very carefully, while it's still warm and has all those flavors, place it on top of your cocktail. Um, beautiful, beautiful smells coming up from the cocktail at this point. You can really smell the caramel and the sugar and the orange zest all like that. The last one we'll do will be an orange rose, which is a very, very simple garnish to do, but it looks fabulous. You're going to take an orange. You want an orange that's firm, has a really tight skin on it, and you want to go ahead and start a peel. I usually just start at the top. And I'm going to go around the orange about one and a half times. Um, as I'm doing this, I'm making sure to use very even pressure so that I get the orange um, peel to be about the same size the whole way down. Um, I'll turn it so that uh, the pith is facing inward and then I will just start to roll it up into a curl. Now as I roll it up into a curl it is going to express some orange oil onto my fingers and so by the time you get to the end of rolling all of this together um, it's going to just smell absolutely fantastic. So this is probably about um, 10 inches of orange peel or so. I've got it into a tight spiral and then when you go ahead to put the skewer in you want to make sure that the skewer comes out and catches the edge of the, um, the end of the peel on the other side. You want to try to get the skewer in there in the middle as much as possible so it's well balanced in your cocktail. If it's too low, your poor orange rose will turn over. So that's what it will look like if we just did it um, just plain, but we're going to go ahead and set it on fire, of course. And what this does is it chars the very top of it. It also releases a bunch of the orange oils as well. But the other thing it does is put small black char lines on the very top and makes it visually a lot more appealing. So that's your very fancy orange rose that we have also torched a little bit to set on fire. So we've done three different things. We started with the orange chip, we also did the brulee, and we ended up with the orange as well, orange rose. So those are your three options for garnishing a fancy old fashioned. Everybody loves sours. They come in many different forms. You can do a New York sour that usually has some wine in it, but today we're doing aquafaba or egg white sours so that we can do a little bit of decoration on top. And we've chosen a little bit of bitters to make a design with. We also have some powder and teas to show you how to build your own cocktail. And then we are also bruleeing a little bit of mint for some fun. So first we're going to start with the one that you see most often out. Take a little bit of bitters into your eyedropper and make little circles. 
Then you're going to take a skewer and go through them and it makes little hearts. All right. For the next one, we're going to do a little bit of design your own adventure on this one. So I'm going to take a coaster, everyday object, and block out half or part however much you want to block out and just sprinkle it. And we're using cocoa powder on this one. So that leaves us with just part of it. And then you can take things like lavender or hibiscus tea and sprinkle on as well. It's pretty much design your own adventure at this point. All right, so beautiful. For our last one, because apparently I am a fire bug, <laughs> we're gonna take a little bit of mint and dip it in a solution of, you can use demerara sugar or you can use white table sugar and a little bit of alcohol and dip your leaf all the way in there and make sure that you completely cover it. Then on a fire safe <laughs> board, you're going to brulee it. And flip it over. I like it because you can see all of the little veins in the leaf. And then, you're just gonna ever so gently place it on top of your foam. And there you have it. So next we're gonna talk garnishes for Manhattans. Manhattan's a very basic bourbon drink. You've got bourbon, you've got sweet vermouth, bitters, that's pretty much all you got. So you can really change things up with the garnish that you put on. Make sure that the garnish matches the ingredients of your um, Manhattan. Um, I'm gonna show you how to do three different things. One is a uh, how to get these nice kind of scalloped edges on um, a piece of orange peel. I'm also gonna show you how to do a leaf cutout um, and how to get it to stay on the glass without falling off. You'll see that in a second. And then also we have um, a fan. So this is something you can do with apples, pears, um, peaches, basically any kind of fruit that you can cut into very slender slices. So let me show you how to do those three things. Oh, and the other thing is also, you can't see it super well, but I also show you how to take an orange wheel. This is a dehydrated wheel, but you can use a regular orange wheel. And just put a mint sprig, or in this case, it's lemon thyme, and float that on the very top of your Manhattan as well. So let me show you how to do those four things. So to begin with, we're gonna do a cleanup on an orange twist. So I just have an orange peel that I have sliced. One of the things you're gonna wanna get if you wanna do fancy garnishes, a set of pinking shears. They're about 15, 10 to 15 bucks on Amazon. And you can just trim away the extra. And we're gonna make a nice long shape. And I like to trim up so all the edges are finished. And you can either just uh, do a twist and plop it in the glass. Um, if you wanted to do a twist, you can roll it up like this and just hold it for a minute or two. That warms up the orange peel a little bit, kind of helps it hold its shape. And you can just kind of pull it out a little bit till it's in a tight swirl. Now you can either drop it in like this or you can take a knife and cut a little slit in the middle and that will give us a place to rest on the rim. I need a little bit more than room than that though. Okay. So if we're going to do that, we're going to go ahead and roll this around and drop that on the rim like that. And you have a nice little fancy orange garnish that then goes ahead and falls into the glass. But you get the idea. All right, so that's one thing you can do. Another thing you can do with oranges is actually a cutout. So in this case, I'm going to cut something that's sort of the shape of a leaf. So I've got one side of the leaf there. I've got a little 
I'm cutting, I don't know if you can see that, I'm cutting a little stem down here. All right. And if you want to be super fancy, you can take the knife and cut out an insert in the middle. In this case, I'm going to do a little oval-shaped insert. I'm going to pop that out. I'm going to fix the edge here. It's not quite the edge that I want. Now, if you really want to do fancy, you can come in here on the side and um, cut in small inserts like the side of a leaf. So you would cut out small triangular shapes on the side. If you are okay with it looking the way that it is without the little cutouts, you just do what you like. I'm trying to do this one fast. So the way to use this, I would use something like this on a taller glass. Sometimes I serve my Manhattans actually in um, a tall vintage. This is a tall vintage glass I found at a uh, thrift shop. So you can just put that on there with a little clothespin. And you have a nice, whoop! <laughs> And you have a clothespin that rebels and flies off. So maybe we should do a, um, a binder clip. Let's try a binder clip. <laughs> and now I think that one's going to stay on. All right, so we're good. So we have two so far. All right, so the third one um, I'm going to do, um, I wanted to do a sprig um, uh, in a wheel. So I have a dehydrated um, citrus wheel heel here. Uh, you can use a fresh wheel if you like. One of the things you can do with these is just put a little sprig of an herb in there and float that on top. So that's one thing you can do with this. And then another thing I did want to show you all how to do is a fan. And a fan is very simple, looks very, um, looks very hard, but it's not. So for a fan, you're going to take an apple or a pear or a plum, and you're going to slice down the side of it like that. You don't want to get into the um, core of it at all. What you'll do next is trim up the sides just a little bit. Okay. So with what you have left, you're going to cut a series of very small, thin slices. And I'm going to cut these, hopefully without cutting my finger. Now, if you're doing this with a peach or an apple, they will turn brown the longer that they're out in the air just because they oxidize. So if you're going to do those for those kinds of fruits, you want to do them right away. So once you have everything cut, this is cut in very small slices. I'm going to put the skewer through the bottom third straight across until it comes out the other side. The next thing you'll do is spread these apart. So you have a nice, lovely fan shape. So this is what you have, and you can use that. This looks good on um, Old Fashions and Manhattans, actually. So um, for our options here, now one thing with the fan is you do have to kind of balance it. It doesn't always want to sit directly on the glass, so you do have to watch how you place it. So we did a fan. We did a nicely trimmed um, uh, garnish that did not quite sit on the rim but I promise you that it would if I had more time and balanced it correctly. There we go. And then we also have a lovely leaf cut out as well. All right, for today, we're making mint julep garnishes. Uh, mint julep is traditionally made with mint, sugar, muddled together and then you add your bourbon and you also add a little bit of spring water or soda water depending on your tastes. Today we're changing it up by doing a candied jelly as a top. We're also doing fresh sage and then the most fun one, a brulee marshmallow. Some technical difficulties with the first mint julep for Felicia's recording so I'm going to do a stand-in real quick. For the first one, we're going to do a mint julep that's candy, uh, garnished with some candies. So we are going to take some small fruit jellies. Um, I've just gotten these. And we've got a couple different colors, and I'm going to put those on the skewer in a couple different directions because you can play with it, and they're fun. 
So you can put these on here however you like. This will go great with a very sweet julep that you've got some fruit flavors in. These are candy jul um, um, uh, pieces and different uh, citrus flavors. So you can just add those to the top of your julep. Make sure you put your straw in. And of course, as always, get a small sprig of mint. Wake it up or do that to it. And then tuck that in right next to the straw. And there you have a very beautiful julep. So for option two, we're going, it's going to be a little bit more fun. We're going to take a marshmallow and brulee it a bit with a torch. Maybe. <laughs> the greatest smell in the world. It reminds me of s'mores. <laughs> and as usual, a straw. And finally, uh, juleps are usually made with mint, but we're going to get a little different here and put some sage in it. The beauty of herbs is that when you lay it in your hand and smack it, it expresses the flavor you're looking for a little better. So that's a beautiful sage smell we've got going here. And last but not least, beautiful straw. For the highball, we want to talk about the, light, the tall length of the glass, and we want to do something that's bright and kind of comes up from the straw. Highballs are usually served with a straw and or a swizzle stick. Um, so we're going to do three different things. We're going to work on putting together a rim on the glass with a little um, cucumber swirl in the glass itself. Um, we're also going to work on putting a sprig in with this lovely, lovely little ribbon right there. Super easy to do. Um, and then also, finally, I'm going to show you how to make this really cute little sun out of lemons, which you can also do from limes. And we added another lemon thyme sprig on that as well. So let me show you how to do those three things to step up your garnish game for your highballs. So to start out, we're going to talk about the shape of a glass. For a highball, you want to put it in a tall glass, a Tom Collins glass, a highball glass. Um, and it, it's a glass that has a lot of height, so you're going to do something that kind of accentuates that height. One of the things that's very popular on um, highballs is putting a rim on it. So I'm going to add a little bit of simple syrup here, and then add some, I've got some cinnamon sugar over here. If you're somebody who likes a sweet highball, it's nice um, to put that on there. So I've just got a huge, long swath of um, simple syrup right there. And then I have got a little bag here with some cinnamon sugar. And I'm just going to drop that on there and let that cover that up. Um, you can see a bit of visual interest on the outside of the glass. If you have something dark like hibiscus, ground up, raspberries, anything that's really bright, you can do that on the side of the glass. It'll look really good. So the other thing you can do with a highball glass is to fill it with a little bit of ice. So um, I've already put some ice in here, so we're going to go ahead and put this little cucumber slice in here with a swizzle stick. And hopefully that will push down a little bit. And if you want to get really fancy, you can like weave baskets with cucumber and do that. But we just want a little bit of a swirl right there so you can see the swirl in it. So once that swirls in there, we're going to add just a little bit of the bourbon because the highball is a couple ounces of bourbon and a little bit of carbonated water. So we're going to put that in there. I'm going to go ahead and add this swizzle stick to it just because it looks fancy and a straw. So that's one option on a highball. Next option on a highball is going to be adding, excuse me, another ribbon. But this time the ribbon we're going to put on a skewer. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the ribbon off the cuke. So I've got this ribbon here and we're going to fold it up really pretty like that. So you have a nice little ribbon looking action and put the skewer through it, right through the center. And I'm going to do a couple of them so I can fill up the whole skewer. 
So here's the second one. And again, to fold it, I'm just doing back and forth. So it looks, basically it looks like ribbon candy, which is also an excellent uh, garnish for a highball as well. So as you can see here, you've got this nice, lovely uh, garnish. So again, we will go ahead and pour in the little bit of bourbon that goes in a highball, a little bit of carbonated water. And for something like a skewer, with the ribbon on it, because in this case we're using a cucumber. Uh, this is also really good in gin and tonics as well if you drink non verb drinks. Um, you can also put a little sprig of an herb in here, and I've got some lemon thyme actually from my garden. So I'm going to slap it in my hand a little bit to activate it and put that right down in there like that. So this is a very green, fresh looking highball. So there we go. So for the last one, we're going to make a sun out of a, a lemon. So we're going to cut off the end of the lemon. We're going to cut another slice right next to it. So this slice is going to be a little bit bigger than the one we just the end we just cut off. I'm going to go in here and score along the inside partitions. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take this slice and we're going to pop it inside out and put it around this other piece. So we're going to pop it inside out. And to do that, you kind of have to separate out all the little pieces in here. So looks like the corona of the sun, right? We're going to get our skewer the skewer right through here and on the other end of it and that will give you a little sun. So we will fill up our glass with ice again. Add bourbon. Add just a sprig of soda water. Now these do look a lot better if you use a lime. They have a little bit more greenish tinge, but I've still got this lime or this lemon thyme over here. So I'm going to put that in the front and put the sprig of thyme beside it and it gives you a nice color contrast. So we've got our rim and our cucumber sprig here. We've got just a lemon thyme sprig with a little ribbon of cucumber there. This one needs a straw as well, and a straw over here. And for the third one, we've got just a tiny little, um, a nice fresh sunshine <laughs> lemon garnish there. So those are three options when you're working with highball. So everyone loves sparkling wine or champagne, but paired with bourbon is quite delicious. These garnishes are fun ways for you to spice up your bourbon cocktails with champagne. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of syrup to show a gradient angle and then also teach you how to do a little swath with lemon. And then, because everyone loves fruit, we have different types of fruit in this one. You can use whatever you like, but I personally chose the hibiscus flower and blueberries because watching the blueberries bounce is very fun. All right, first we're going to start with a swath. And I feel more comfortable with a paring knife, but there are also different ways that you can cut it. Um, so, and now to clean up my mess that I made here, just slice the ends off. <laughs> then we're going to discard that piece of, that piece of it and then you can wrap it around a straw or anything cylindrical and try to get it to hold its shape a little bit and then you pull out your straw then you have a little curl but we're gonna <laughs> add a little bit of syrup which is going to sink to the bottom and make beautiful gradient picture 
but also be careful because sometimes the bubbles get really active and it can overflow. <laughs> and for our other garnish, you can do so many different things with fruit. Uh, today we've got some dried hibiscus flowers, blueberries, or strawberries, which is usually everybody's go-to. But I personally like a dried hibiscus flower. And then you can kind of sink it to the bottom a little bit. Perfect. <laughs> For fun, let's put some blueberries in it. Because they tend to float around a little bit. So let's say you wander into your garden and you're like, I have all these things, but I don't know what goes with what. Just This is gonna be just like a quick little lesson about some flavor profiles that you could use. For instance, basil. I like to use basil in savory drinks. Um, sometimes you can add a fruit or citrus to it. Like um, a lot of people like to use peach and basil together. Um, and of course, everybody loves mozzarella, tomatoes, and basil. So I go on the savory side with it. We've also got a bit of sage. Um, sage you can use more for bitter cocktails. Also add sweet to it too. It's a fun contrast with that. Uh, also, mint is, well, our good old Kentucky mint juleps always, but it adds a refreshing quality to drinks. Um, of course, you know, they're used in mojitos and different things like that. And there are so many different varieties of mint that I just found out about recently. And each one has its own distinct flavor, so it's fun to play with those too. And then we've also got a little bit of lemon thyme, which I like to do with a little bit of spice, personally. Um, so for all of these, you can use uh, sweet elements, but then you can also have some fun with some spicy, peppery, or bitter elements. So have at it. Alicia just talked about what to do with garnishing from your garden. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about how to garnish from your pantry. As you can see, we've switched venues very quickly um, so that I can show you how to do this when you're at home. This is my little mobile bar that I have at home. On the cutting board in front of me, I have some of the things that I always have on hand at home to do garnishing. Now again, with garnishing, you wanna make sure you match your garnish to the flavor and to the visual and aromatics that you have in the cocktail already. You wanna build an experience around that cocktail. So some of the things I always have on hand are, for example, cinnamon sticks, which last forever. Um, you can easily take a kitchen torch and smoke it a little bit. It'll give it a little bit more smoky, warm cinnamon flavor uh, and aroma to the cocktail. It's easy to toss in an old fashioned or lay atop the top of a Manhattan as well. In addition, I've got some star anise. Um, these are great for Sazeracs and Manhattans as well, especially a black Manhattan where you're talking about using an Amaro and something that has sort of deeper notes in it. Um, <clears throat> along with those two, I have some other dried fruit that I just keep on hand. Um, I've also got some um, freeze dried strawberries and raspberries that I get at Trader Joe's. Easy to, to put atop um, a more fruity cocktail if you're doing something like a highball that has strawberry in it or if you're making a sour that has perhaps strawberry syrup in it or um, something uh, that, that uses a lot of raspberry notes as well, you can use the dried raspberries. So those are two very easy things that you can use to top your cocktails. You can also crumble it and use it on the rim as well. I have used both raspberry and strawberry. I crush them up into a fine powder and use those to rim cocktails as well. In addition, I have these little teeny um, uh, candied hibiscus flowers. We use those in the champagne cocktails. Those are great just to add a lot of visual appeal. They look fun um, on top of a cocktail, so those are very cool. I keep on stock, in stock uh, toasted, notes, uh, toasted nuts or candied nuts. Um, these are great on top of Manhattans. Um, you can easily put them on a skewer. Um, super easy just to put on the top of a cocktail, however. Um, in addition, we already talked a little bit about the dehydrated orange crisps uh, or orange chips. Um, these are super easy to do yourself at home. You can look them up online. They're all over Pinterest. Um, you can also uh, buy them in stores. They now sell uh, cocktail garnishes that are dehydrated like that. Um, something else definitely want to have on hand is some chocolate. <clears throat> the chocolate I use a couple different ways. The main way I'd use the chocolate is if I'm doing a sour or uh, uh, an old fashioned or something with chocolate notes. And I want to grate just a little bit of that chocolate very finely and put that on top. Um, it'll sink into the cocktail a little bit 
And if you're using a straw, it falls to the bottom. And as you sip the cocktail, you get little uh, tiny pizza, pieces of grated um, chocolate as you're drinking it. Uh, another way to use it is to break off small squares and put them on a skewer. To do that, you're going to want to heat the skewer up with a kitchen torch or some kind of um, just on the stove just very quickly. If you warm it up a little bit as you put it through the small piece of chocolate, it won't break the chocolate. So that's another tip as well. So these are some of the things that I always have on hand as part of my pantry items to garnish with. Um, a lot of times I will combine something like this that I have on this uh, cutting board with something from my garden, either lemon verbena or mint or basil, depending on the season and what I have outside. So if you are looking to up your cocktail game at home, these are some of the things that I would suggest playing with. And really anything you have at home, you can use as a garnish. If you have small pieces of candy, you could put those on a skewer. If you have fresh fruit, use your fresh fruit as part of the garnish. Think about what you put in the cocktail and what you want to elevate, what kind of scents and smells that you want to elevate in the cocktail as long as, as well as tastes. So think about that as you're putting your um, pantry garnish um, supplies together, but uh, just play and have fun. When you're making cocktails at home, you're the only audience, so you get to do whatever you like. I want to thank you for having me with you today with our garnish fun <laughs> and to those of you watching remember we're not curing any diseases we're making cocktails so make sure that you're having fun if you don't get the garnish right the first time then oh well you have to make another drink oh, and try no. again <laughs> it's so terrible <laughs> So thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you Felicia for helping me out with this. We really appreciate your time today and for letting us use this establishment. And um, thank you for sharing all of your knowledge with us as the bourbon women as we try and up our cocktail garnish game while we're all kind of still stuck inside. So thank you very much today. Hey you guys, make sure you're having fun while you garnish. It's all just one big experiment. We'll see you soon.